good afternoon to everyone. Welcome. So fantastic to be here to discuss this important issue. So I also want to thank Dr. Tedros because he has given the relevance it needs. Um, I also care for men anyway, eh? not only for women. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm going to share the first session that it's called Partners and Countries Together Towards Elimination. So, as we have heard from Therese, uh, we all know that cervical cancer is affecting lots of women. Uh, in many countries, maternal mortality has come down, but more women are dying because of cervical cancer. Worldwide, over a quarter of a million of women die of cervical cancer each year, and that means approximately one woman dying every two minutes. And 90% of these deaths, as in many other non-communicable diseases or diseases, um, are in low and middle income countries. Women living with, this, uh, with HIV, for example, have um, four or five times greater risk of developing cervical cancer. Cervical cancer, of course, has a significant uh, socioeconomic impact on women affected but as well as in their families and their communities. In 2010, cervical cancer cost the global economy an estimated of 2.7 billion US dollars. And by 2030, if we are not able to um, eliminate it or at least decrease the numbers of people affected, it will rise to 4.7 billion US dollars. But the most important thing is that it can be prevented. It can be, first of all, it can be diagnosed. It can be, if it's in an early stage, it can be treated, and many of them are curable. Almost all of these deaths can be avoided if all adolescent girls were immunized against the human papilloma virus, and cervical cancer and treatment of precancerous lesions were available to all women. I'm very happy, I'm, I'm, I, you heard all the things that I've been doing in my life, but well, not all, some of them. <laughs> but one of the things that I have not been told that it, in my second government, uh, that just finished in March, we started with the HPV vaccination to all girls at nine years old. Uh, so uh, at public schools are also available in, in private schools. So I feel that uh, I would started doing the right thing in this area. And we know that, um, so the important thing here is not to discuss whether, um, how to overcome cervical cancer. We are here to discuss how to implement faster health programs all over the world. That is why it's so important to learn from other experiences and models to exchange lessons, but also to exchange the obstacles you can find. Because I started the vaccination, but we did have people who were reluctant to it, with not very scientific reasons, like it happens with many vaccines. So there are obstacles, not only financial obstacles, but also other kinds of obstacles. So I think it's very important that in these sessions, we can do those exchanges and facilitate factors. 